All right, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to our Digital Services Forum bi-weekly call. Today, we're going to talk about crafting digital offerings using ServiceNow. And this is, I'm going to talk a lot today about product management. So when we start to talk about high value digital product management, I'll talk to you specifically about where I'm referring to. And it'll tie back to some of the things we've been talking about the last few meetings, like the way that we're looking at portfolios and, um, and developing those portfolios. But before I start, I always like to welcome new members. And I will take this link and post it in the meeting. So if you want to get all the information about the group, uh, we have these four, four points you need to know about. The Zoom meeting that you're on today, the forum homepage, and then also our YouTube playlist. And then there's a link on a shared instance that we use. And I'll be demoing some of the stuff off the shared instance today. I'll let you read through why we created this group. If you're here for the first time, if you could post your name inside of the um, inside of the chat, that'd be great, your name and where you're from. But what we do is we get together and help people with the digital transformation. And a lot of people are looking at ServiceNow as a primary platform for that. So our main way to get information out to you is like on these bi-weekly calls. And when you come here, this is more of a forum. So it's more of a collaboration of things. Uh, don't expect to see like polished videos here or, or demos that we're doing on state-of-the-art stuff. There's, there's other places for that. So here you might see some rough ideas or stuff that's being worked on in the field right now. That's really the purpose of it, to get together and just talk about the general thing around service delivery, right? And the general service delivery instead of specific solutions or anything like that. So today, to jump right into the topic, I want to talk about these, these groups of things that we've been talking about. So if you look on the bottom, a lot of the last few meetings, I talked about people buy technology, they buy enterprise applications, which are the major investments in technology. And then their big goal is to take that technology and get value from it. So what they're trying to do is say, how do we deliver services to our customers, services and products? How do we deliver services and products to our employees? How do we create a better shared service component so we're not doing the same things over and over and over again? What are those components that are worth sharing? Like if I need a server, I don't say, oh, I'm going to do a product complaint. I need to get a server. That's already figured out in most organizations. They go to IT and they get a server. And then IT will turn around and, and also have the factory a lot of times. And the factory is, some people call it app dev. Some people call it DevOps. Some people call it... Um, some people call it CICD, right? So whatever you're calling that function, it's the place where we take these things and configure them to provide value. So if we look at a cross department workflow, okay, let's say today that there is an employee service running and they're running service center on ServiceNow and then department one has ITSM. So today what we're gonna talk about is how we develop this package. And so, so if they come in for ITSM and there's department two says, hey, I want ITSM like department one has. They'll come over to IT and they'll say, how do I get IT service management? IT will in turn say, let's configure IT service management for department two. So what they'll do is they'll pass it on to the factory team and that factory team is going to build and configure what they need to. So now that department two can have that service provided to them. And so a lot of times what we do here, uh, this is kind of, if you've seen demos from ServiceNow, you hear them talk about the messy middle. This is often a messy middle. Like I've gone into a lot of organizations recently and they'll have 20 or 30 teams using ITSM. And a lot of times they'll, uh, good portion of them will have their own dashboards. They'll have their own reporting. They'll do all their own things and they treat each one as a separate deployment. A lot of times, even in ITSM, you can end up with this technical debt that you don't need to have. So what we're gonna talk about today is, what if we were to take inside of your organization, if you're, if you're doing this, right? Inside of your organization, you have an IT service management product manager. Okay, and they're able to create a package 
and offer that package in your catalog to other departments so that they can come and get it. We're gonna talk about the process of doing that. A lot of people have talked about that today, but I wanna talk about some of the, the areas where we can really elevate the value of the service. So today, instead of people saying, hey, in the central IT, we're hosting ServiceNow and you could come use ServiceNow. Now we're being more explicit. We're saying, hey, you can come and we have ServiceNow and you can get IT service management. All right, so that package that we're talking about creating. And we're just using service management as an example because I figured everybody on this call would understand IT service management. Most people have it. And that's why I picked that as one of the, um, one of the services to share. So what we want to talk about next is who do we have to enable? Like what, who are the people, if we're going to actually package this, who are the people that we have to think about? So in a lot of places, I work mostly in state government. Um, the state government has a central IT agency. And so do a lot of different customers that we work with in the commercial space. But what we're doing now is we're saying we have to enable this product manager to be able to go out and say, hey, this is what we do for IT service management. This is what we can provide to you. And what does that package look like? So they're interested in the packaging. Do they have to do a chargeback for this? Because those other departments are now going to be you're going to be sharing ITSM with those other departments. Once they create that package, you need this liaison. And um, in some of the places I work, they call them account managers, where they go into the other departments and explain what central IT offers. Sometimes they're called solution engineers. I just call them department liaison. So whatever you call those people that are out telling other departments that, hey, we could spin up a VM for you. We could spin up a website for you. We can give you a DNS entry. Uh, we can provision your, your onboard, your new employees, right? So those people that are out there communicating what that central IT area has, what that shared service function delivers, uh, that's, I'm calling them the liaison. Then there's the architect. If somebody comes in and says, hey, I want to use your IT service management, um, I have to be able to provision that. So the architect is going to be the one that actually does the design and helps with the provisioning. And then at the end, there's the developer. So if we take if we take ITSM and we create a package and we could, we're able to get them 80% of the way there with that package, the developer is there to configure or even write some code for that last 20% to make sure that department has what they actually need. And so the concept of a product manager and the concept of all these people being involved in that product delivery is the big focus of today. We're going to talk through each one of these people and what we could potentially do with ServiceNow to enable this chain of people. And so let's start with a product manager. Now today, usually there's a, a, a product manager, a product owner, and it's the ServiceNow product owner. So if you don't have product managers for things like IT service management, or in my field, it's constituent management, if you don't have a product manager for that, it all lands on the ServiceNow platform because they say, hey, ServiceNow can do something there. Right? But now we're explicitly calling out that product manager. And what they're able to do is they're able to come in and say, how do I set pricing? How do I determine what capabilities are going to be in my package? So the service manager has this screen that we've been looking at in ServiceNow for a while, which are all the ServiceNow capabilities that they could become familiar with. And right. so a lot of times they're looking at incident management so they could, or service, IT service management rather. So in this package, they could say, I'm going to use incident management. I'm going to use request management. I'm going to use some of these things down here, right? But I'm not going to put everything in my product to begin with. I'm, going to, I'm thinking minimally viable product, right? So I could package what I want. It's not what ServiceNow wants me to package. It's what I want to package because I'm managing ITSM for my specific organization. So the other, the other benefit that they have, like I'm working with state governments, the other benefit that we have working in a state government, if I'm patch, packaging like a constituent offering or an employee offering like IT service management, the other benefit is I have is I could color outside the lines, right? So I'm not selling what ServiceNow has, I'm selling what I want to from ServiceNow, but I'm also able to go ahead and I'm able to add things in. Like if my incident management interacts with things like Esri or PayZen or DocuSign. That's what I, I work with a lot in, in the public sector space. 
But if you really think about it with IT service management, when you start to do request management, we've interfaced with SAP before because with request management, you have to do financial transactions and a lot of these other vendors down here. So when you configure your package for IT service management, tell her outside the lines, don't stay in just what ServiceNow has. And so what you're trying to do is get to that 80%. So when that department comes on and says, I want to use your IT service management package, it's it's my package, right? It's not it's not the vendor's package anymore. It's something that I created. So if the product manager is able to take all these things, decide what they want in there, the other thing that they'll need to do is they'll need to talk about pricing. So if you're doing this packaging on service now, like I'm suggesting here, um, a typical place that they'll do is they'll say, Service now charges by fulfiller. So I mark up the fulfiller. And it's as simple as that. A lot of people get really hung up on, hey, if I'm building a product and I'm offering people the ability to use service now, how do I license it? How do I charge back those departments? Well, this is how most people are doing it, especially with ITSM. Like we have a lot of customers today that have marked up ITSM and are able to go ahead and, and do that simple uh, that simple markup on, on that service. Now, if you go outside the lines, you start using some of those other vendors, your pricing model gets a little bit more complex. Uh, but in the beginning, thinking minimal viable product with IT service management, um, you could start with that simple fulfiller pass-through if that's your licensing model. All right, so now if we talk about the second persona, let's talk about the department liaison. Now, what does this department liaison need to do? Now, think about that product manager first, and then think about the transition from that product manager. They're not selling their package to the, to the departments that are out there that are looking at ITSM. They're basically selling the package to this liaison because the liaison is the one out there saying, hey, these are the things that I'm selling. I can get you a VM. I could get you that DNS entry, but I can also get you this package that drops ITSM on your desktop right? That gives you this pre-packaged ITSM offering that we're using today. Okay, so now this liaison is the one that's getting that package from the product manager. So what the liaison needs to be able to do is they need to be able to communicate the value of the product or the services that they're selling, and they need to grow the subscription base. So some of the states I go into, they'll have up to 20 departments using their sharing their IT service management. So it's not just that central IT in the state that's using it, but they're sharing it with other departments and other agencies. It's so that in order to share it more, a lot of people need to talk about it. I was with a, I was with one of them the other day, and they didn't even know that part of their package for ITSM that they were able to do asset management, right? So things like that are what would need to be communicated. So this liaison would need to be able to demonstrate value. So they need to be able to go to say, the value is going to be that you get this interface and your items that you determine will be on here uh, in this interface. So if people come on from your department, your department's items will show up under the IT folder. You, they'll also have mobile access. So this is all part of your base package. This is the package the product manager built so that that department liaison can show it. And so this is some of the work that would need to be done that's above and beyond ServiceNow because you're showing things that you assemble. You're showing your screen, right? Your portal that they'll be able to have their people signing into ITSM for. Uh, you're showing your mobile app here. You're not showing the ones that I have in this picture. When you go to the Service Ops workspace, the other thing you get as part of this base package is a workspace for your agents. So all the people that are getting either incidents or requests that are coming in now that you opened up ITSM for your department, uh, you'll also get that working space that's pre-built for them. And then the last thing you'll get is the ability to have an analyst portal. So this, this package here is what you need to create to demonstrate that value. And again, it's not ServiceNow coming in showing this to every one of your departments, it's your team, it's your department liaisons that need to have enough knowledge to demonstrate this package that you've created. Right. And when the analyst portal here, we have to make sure as part of that package, we could potentially, I, don't, I shouldn't say we have to make sure, but besides these two interfaces, part of our package could also be an analyst portal, right? So that you could come in and see everything for your department specifically and get reporting on it. 
All right. So the the other thing we have to be able to explain is we have to be able to explain the time to value. Now, in the beginning, you might not be able, you won't be able to do this because you haven't really sent the package out before. But you have to say all these other departments in a, in a lot of the places I work and a lot of what I've seen, there might be 20 other ITSM solutions in that same organization. And so what you're communicating here is, yeah, you can go out and buy your own solution, but hey, in our shared service organization and IT, we already built this. And we can get you there a lot quicker than going out and buying your own package and installing your own package and, and taking care of it all. Right. So a lot of that is preventing that sprawl in, in that tool space, right? In that shared service space, creating cr preventing that sprawl of everybody buying their own IT service management solution. And so that time to value will come over time. We could say, hey, for department X, we were able to do this in six weeks or four weeks, right? Where a typical ITSM deployment is going to take you multiple months to do. And that's the that's the big Thing that you need to be able to do with that department liaison is give them the tools to do that. And it's a lot like what ServiceNow does, right? We come in, we talk to you about ITSM, we talk to you about time to value, um, all of those other things. Okay, the other part now we get into the architect. So what is the architect needs to design, make sure that it's secure, uh, make sure that it's very innovative. And they're looking for, will people use my designs? And will people reuse my designs, right? So I'm looking to, to do design for reuse here as well. So with the architect, um, we can have a, we can pre-build these architectural artifacts, right? Because we know what that package is. We can build something like this very quickly. We can say, yeah, it's technology management, it's the business capability. So all the way down from your business architecture, we're using the technology management, business capability. We're using the business application from ServiceNow. We're using IT service management package from ServiceNow. And this is ServiceNow running in prod, but we have a specific team that's just managing people that are using my ITSM as a service product. And so we can build out this whole support model. So you have that structure in there without the architect doing anything. So imagine the architect getting this as an artifact because we already know what the package is. And then here we can say, here's department one's new offering. And here's, here's ITSM for department one. But in the beginning, we're gonna just give them incident management, right? So incident management is the offering. And that's, that could be what you start with. And then later, maybe you talk about change and knowledge and, and other things that are in the package. But if I gave this is enough for that architect to now say, okay, this is the design. Do we agree with this design? This is how much that design will cost to implement, right? Now, when you think about that architect, when they're looking at this new department two now comes in and says, I wanna have a service, right? So that architect gets involved in that, in that planning phase. So what you basically end up with is you end up with a demand or a request for a new service. And I'm gonna actually demo this to you. I'm gonna demo where we can see that ITSM package in the portal, in that shared service portal, and we can request it. So we're gonna actually see where this demand comes to life. Now, what happens as we request that? Well, the architects need to get eyes on it and says, is there anything unique about the requirements for department two versus department one? What do they really need? They need, they need that incident form, they need to add additional fields, they need to have different views, right? There might be requirements that come out of that. We're not just gonna have everybody satisfied with out of the box. So that planning phase is an area that we have to look at for those new services coming in. And then also the build phase. So what happens as I start to configure ITSM for department two, right? Department two that's coming in. And then when it's running, how do I give them an operational picture on IT service management specifically for department two? I don't just wanna bundle it in with the IT service management we're using in that central IT organization. Okay, so this reusable package, if you look at it, the architects are actually looking at, at two areas, not one. They're looking at two different services and they're simultaneously building out those services. So they're looking at the new one that's obvious. Department two ordered ITSM out of my catalog. I need to get ITSM for department two. And so I have a demand that came in and I'm working that demand to get 
department two, right? That demand came in for this. And, I, and I'm working that as the architect to make sure that I have a design for it, even though I, I already have the design started. Now, the other thing I'm looking at at the same time, because you have an architect on it and you didn't dump it off right to dev, you also have people looking at this package, this ITSM as a service package that we created. So not only can you iterate on the thing you're building, but you can iterate on that shared service as well to even create more value with that service. And so when you create that package explicitly, you have a lot more a lot more ability to add value than just having one-offs every time somebody comes in and says, I want ITSM, right? You have this package and there's a lot of benefits to having that package, which I'm gonna show you in a little demo here in a minute. Um, one is you can get it out really quick. If I, if I can define that 80% and I could say, this is what we need for our organization, I should be able to hit a button and, and give people access. Okay. That's real the value of the product. So this is, um, this is one I was working on. It's a little bit of a different idea, but it's behind that shared service. So in this one, instead of ITSM as a shared service, we said, hey, let's have a constituent service. So let's have a customer service and we're gonna have a shared service for a customer. And then we started working on permitting. Uh, so we started to say, hey, we need an open burning permit or we need a solid waste permit. And then we started iterating and we like, wait a minute, this is, this." Um, Constituent requests we developed, it's pretty bare bones. So we need a lot more things to actually build a permit or build a license. So what we said this, what we started to say is the architect is can we develop develop a higher level, a higher value shared service than just constituent requests? So we actually build a state permitting template. Right. And what that template does, it says, I need to, one, I, I need a sign-in component. So I need to be able to identify either the, the citizen, the constituent or I need to be able to identify the company that's calling in asking me for a permit. Well, if I'm gonna burn a field, I need GIS features. I need to be able to circle my cornfield and say, that's the field I'm burning. So I need to be able to lasso the field or shape select it. So these are features I get from another platform, not from ServiceNow. I also need a digital signature, right? So the digital signature comes and this, this uh, organization used DocuSign was their standard. I need to have an electronic payment. They use PayZen for that. So what we can do is we can take all of these things and wrap it into a higher value package called state permitting, right? So next time I come for a permit, all that stuff is pre-built. And now I'm, I'm building a higher stack of Legos instead of just saying, hey, you can start a constituent request here. Now I'm saying you could start a license and it's a higher value. I'm closer to the value that those agencies are looking for in getting permitting. So think about ITSM in that same way, right? So if you have that package, like the example here is they wanted a burn permit. So they came to IT, they said, IT help me. And IT said, we have this constituent request, but as they started working, they said, wait a minute, we can actually create higher value. So they developed a new package and they said, okay, let's, let's create a reusable package called permit management with all our vendors in it. So now we pass that permit management when a new permit comes into that build config team, and we can get a value back to that department a lot faster now because we have that higher level package. Right? So what you're trying to do here in shared services, the days in shared services of like racking boxes and giving out VMs and saying, here's your new DNS entry, uh, those days are quickly leaving us, right? We have to figure out in that shared service organization, how do we move closer to the value that our customers need or our employees need uh, without saying, you know, here's here's a bomb with your IP address and here's some system administrators will get you the, the machines, like all those things. Make that all go away and just think about these higher value packages that you can create. And I'm, I'm giving you an example on service now, right? But the product management, I think, in this shared service organization goes a long way because not only are you building these things, you're also marketing them. You're responsible for the proliferation of them. So the more that you build those, uh, the more you're able to go ahead and provide that, that higher value that we're talking about. All right now when it comes down, really what I'm talking about here, um, a lot of times there's the executive sponsorship on ServiceNow, there's the ServiceNow platform owner. And usually these, like I gave all those examples of IT service management and you're sharing it out. 
the ServiceNow platform owner becomes the default product manager if you're not doing product management. So what I'm suggesting here is this shared service portfolio owner, right? Is they're one of the customers of the ServiceNow platform because some of their shared services are offered on ServiceNow. So what we're suggesting here is you have a new role, a product manager role, and that product manager is going out there and creating that ITSM package. And then they're adding things as they need to into that package, right? And this way, when you create this package, if you have 20 departments using your ITSM, well, guess what? When the base package gets AI, get like the Gen AI stuff we talked about last week, everybody gets Gen AI, right? That base package gets updated by me and I don't have to have all 20 departments coming back and saying, hey, how do I use AI in my agent console? Well, it's already there, right? We deployed it in the base package and everybody got it. So right now what I see is um, with ServiceNow is they call a vendor and they stand up ITSM for department one, department two, department three, department 20. And they're not getting that reusability of all the configuration that was done to this base component that gets product managed. So that's a little bit about any questions. Anybody have any questions before I jump in and show you a little bit about the automation that's possible here? Some stuff in chat. Okay. Hey, John, this is Mitch real quick. Um, not real quick, because this could take a whole nother um, mm -hmm. session, but it's interesting you're pointing out a model where the product owner of ServiceNow drives a lot of the governance and management of the different products within ServiceNow, including ITSM. I was talking to a colleague uh, from Princeton, if anyone here is from Princeton, and they were talking about um, the, the counter to that, which is really leveraging a service management office from mm -hmm. strictly ITSM to moving to more ESM. So then they they would become the product owner for ServiceNow, managing all the different products within ServiceNow. So I could see this sort of digital project teams restructuring to um, being sort of that um, uh, arc, arc point or that 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 point that holds everything together being the the enterprise service management office and being aligned with um, the service now product team the developers um, and then really being under sort of a CX so in and so you know this is very service now driven as far as the product team structure but have you looked at kind of that model? Yeah, like an SM uh, an SMO model, right? Is basically yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and some of the states I'm working with have developed that SMO model, and a lot of them are talking about product management already. So yeah. they're trying to get there to see exactly how do I get to these higher value packages, right? Instead of instead of just saying we have service now, and, right? There's some value in the platform, but you know it's not explicit. It's yeah, there's a lot of ways to get value, and you just kind of leave that open, then you get a mess. But if you yeah, so this is more of an SMO creation in a lot of the states. And I'm seeing around constituent services as well. It's like, how do we, because I work with states, right? How do we get constituent services faster? So they're they're creating functions and offices around that as well. John, this is Jeff Aldrich from uh, Excel Energy. I guess going back to your color outside the lines point, I mean, to me, it feels like the product owners for these functional products should not be underneath or you know the, the the service now platform team or vice versa the service now platform team shouldn't be under any particular one they should be independent yes and they can choose to use the service now platform for some or all of their of what the, the technology that they need to provide their services but they may choose other products and other platforms or other things from other places to assemble their functional product and if you get them too closely tied together you you know that can actually have some disoptimizations yep um and so i i would think you'd be better off to have the platform team be separate from all of it, supplying services to all those different product teams as if, if they choose that platform as part of their solution, but not exactly. being subservient to or over the top of these, the functional products are the point. That's yep. what the business needs. Yep. Yeah. Exactly right. And that's why this, this service, you want to, the biggest thing we do when we start putting this governance in place is carve out that service now platform owner. And they're like, you don't care about this at all. <laughs> right. They're your customer and you're serving them. You're not serving these people like department one. You're not responsible for department one. You're not even responsible for ITSM. You're responsible for keeping the platform up. 
So you keep the interfaces up, you keep the integrations going, you do the upgrades, and you have to sell the platform value to these other people, but you don't do these things, right? Somebody owns how we do development on the platform. Somebody owns how we build shared services on the platform. So a lot of this governance usually gets the, because everything lands here, right? This person ends up supporting 20 departments with ITSM because they just let it happen. So you're right, we do carve this out. And then the people that are here, it's not all shared services, but it's the ones that are usually consuming the ServiceNow platform. So this is a like a ServiceNow governance meeting. So if they're not using ServiceNow to deliver a shared service, like if they're, you're delivering Google services and you're not using ServiceNow, you wouldn't be at this in this organization, right? So this is more of a ServiceNow governance structure. Um, but you know, if you're doing product management across the entire organization and you're not just dabbling with it in ServiceNow, um, you know, you would have a broader model that would have multiple platforms teams involved instead of the, just the ServiceNow platform team. So you call them a product owner too. They're selling their product to these people, just like these people are selling their product to people in the organization. And that's why I kind of carved out that dichotomy in the beginning, like the shared service organization never delivers value or hardly ever delivers value directly to customers. They deliver value to a department that delivers value to customers. Right? So you need that department in the loop, like the customer service department. If they're using ServiceNow package, right, they would be represented here. All right, and a lot of this too is getting to, there's, there's a couple of good papers um, in the open group. Uh, I do a lot of dabbling in there about moving from product management to pro or from project management to product management and how that's different, right? Is that we're not just building stuff in IT and hoping people come, but we're explicitly assigning somebody the responsibility of making sure there's a proliferation of ITSM in this case. Like your job is not to go ahead and, and, you know, make sure that everybody is getting the services. Your job is to be out there basically figuring out what I could put in that package to make it more valuable for my organization. And then how do I get the next customer, right? Instead of, instead of customers kind of stumbling in and saying, I want ITSM too. And then this person saying, oh, we can do that, right? They're more yeah. explicit about wanting to do that, right? So it's hey, more intentional. Question. Hey, listen. So I put in the chat, how do you uh, reconcile? I understand that this is conceptual and you're using terms like liaison, but in the chat are all the out of the box fields in ServiceNow related to this discussion and fields such like such as product owner, which is a field that's on the actual product record in ServiceNow is there for a reason. Now, looking at a business application and the business owner or an IT application owner out of the box field, you know, you can deem conceptually per your you know, discussion here that a business owner of a business application could be, you know, the product owner if that business app application is considered product. But yep. a business app consumes an app service, which has the, uh, you know, the offerings dependent on. And then the obviously in the app service, you have the infrastructure servers that have products installed to them with product owners. So how do you reconcile all of that with what you're conceptualizing here, but how it would then be mapped to these out of the box fields in service now? Yeah, I haven't rationalized all that yet. And and what I've been on this one is purposely vague. Like I didn't, um, kind of like DPM does with a solution owner, because these people are called different things in all different types of organizations. So when I started, I kind of set up the personas that I was using as a product manager um, and a, a developer. I didn't call them a specific type of developer, right? But I, I was purposely vague here to include a lot of people in there. So whoever the department liaisons, I've, I've heard them call about four different things in organizations that I'm working with. So whoever they are, whether the solution engineers or account managers or, or liaisons, uh, and where they live, whether they live in the departments or they live in that central shared service organization. Um, and the same with the architects, solution architect, app architect, enterprise architect. They didn't want to get hung up on the terminology of who's designing, who's developing. And the same with product. This is product slash service manager. Some people call this service manager, and it's basically the same function. I'm trying to 
be in that SMO, I'm trying to create services that I can provide value with. So don't get hung up on, I didn't do any mapping into our models or anything like that yet. I'm just using those general personas that can mean a lot of different things underneath. Yeah, maybe when you do that mapping, you're going to find gaps. Department liaison, for example, could easily be mapped to business relation manager, for example, which is an out of the box field in service now. But I get it. I get your point. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So what I did, and I'm going to drop this in GitHub, just like I, I did with a couple other apps, if you guys ever I wanted to use the stub. But what I did is I said, okay, how do we come in now and think about this? from a product manager. So I'm wearing my product manager hat. I've been tasked with selling service now um, into other areas of the organization so that we don't end up with 25 different ITSM products floating around that I got to take care of later. Um, and that's my job, right? So, so if I come in and I start to think about an app, I want to provide a catalog item. I want to be able to advertise IT service management, you know, really obvious. I need to come in and be able to explain to people what that is, right? So that they can say, do I want to use it or not? The other thing I need to do is put it in, where do I put it in the catalog? Well, I'm going to park it under this category here. So part of my app will be creating a parking place for that item so that they can order it or inquire more about it. The other thing I want to start doing is I don't want to start from scratch. I don't want to say, oh, you know, Johnny over in department two needs ITSM. I want to automate as much as I can of that. So I want Johnny to click on I'm interested in, and I want him to get an email saying, here's how you log in, right? Here's all your interfaces. So that's, that's what you can do. That's the power of doing a lot of this and packaging on the platform is I could auto create architecture. I can, I can do auto product management. I could create workflows for all this stuff. So if I have 20 departments doing the same thing, I only do it once. I don't want to come in at 20 times and create an agent workspace for somebody. I don't want to come in 20 times and do something else for somebody. I want to send them an email and say, look, here's all the stuff that's already done. If you want to log in now and see ITSM, start using it now. Right. And you can get there pretty easily. I did this about four hours less yesterday. I worked on this and I created just a couple simple workflows. I didn't create the one for development. Development would create the catalog items for department two, right? Like department two submit incident. It also wouldn't create the architecture, but I've done this before. I've automated where we create that CSDM model I showed you. So you don't have to build it. So you could package all this up in one package for that ITSM product owner so that they can go ahead and, and have all this automation in one spot. So let me show you an example of this on, on just the little stub I built yesterday, right? So about four hours of work and, and what I did. So now somebody comes in and I'm going to call him. Um, I think I just called him like Johnny No Privs. So somebody logs into the employee center and this is where everybody comes to get, get services, right? So whether it's IT services or HR services, this is any service that you want. So in this case, I want a shared service. And I want to use ITSM for my department. Right, so I can click on ITSM and, oh, look, IT service management is something that I offer in my portfolio. Right, so I can click on IT service management. And now what is that thing? Well, it's uh, it gives you this employee center, right? A modern user interface so that I can have my employees come in and submit tickets for my department. It gives me this place where I can have my agents work. And um, hey, if I want to get started on this thing, I just have to tell it you know, who I am. And then uh, what is my test assignment group? So I could just say, hey, Johnny's group. Johnny's group is the group that is going to be using um, this service when it's all done. Right? Usually you'd have a department name in here. Like I could have department two, the name of department two. So I could say like finance wants to use it because finance has their own IT team. So whatever the group is, right? That's what you're creating there. Now, when I hit submit here, I'm going to show you what it does. Um, you know, just as far as I was able to take it yesterday. But basically what I'm doing now is I'm, I got this person, Johnny Noprivs, asking me for this service. And they just clicked on the button for the service. And typically I would say, okay, we need to talk to a vendor. We need to talk to this person to get it all started. 
Uh, but what I did instead is I said, okay, how can we get them all the way through that? Right? How can we, whether this gets approved or something else happens down the road, um, right? There might be approvals before we let them have access to the environment. But what we want to really do here is give them that as much as we can. So I'm waiting for the email to come in because Johnny Nopris has my email address attached to it. And, um, and this is the email that it just created. All right, so, so it says, you know, hello, Johnny Noprivs. Thank you for requesting IT service management service offering. Um, end user privileges to see the catalog item that you've been given uh, to Johnny, was given to Johnny Noprivs. Other individual groups may be added later. So here you can go and click and we automated the creation of the catalog item for you know, a submission of that incident, but only he can see it for now, right? Until other end users are added that have privileges to see that incident ticket in the service portal. You can also go see, hey, what do my agents get to use, right? So you can click on service operations workspace. And now I have access now to go into service operations workspace and to see only my organization's tickets, right? Only the tickets for fin the finance team. Um, and I have an, a working operations console. I also did the architecture. So I can see the architecture design that's been done automatically. And I can also go to DPM and see the reporting that's available for the solution owner of the ITSM install for, for, um, for that organization, right? In, in this case, the finance organization. So the idea here would be to take Johnny through their first journey by saying, hey, go to the incident catalog item. And I haven't wired all these things yet where I auto created it, but here they would end up right in the service, in the demo uh, workspace, wherever you're, so they would end up in the development environment and have access to their new catalog item or catalog items. Maybe you create an incident ticket and one request for them, right? So you're able to go in and have those links so that they're just landing right on them in the dev environment. So that's where you can get to when you think about doing automation or having a product manager is building this automation instead of just waiting, you know, for a vendor or for your your overwhelmed ServiceNow team to come up and say, okay, now we're ready to set up ITSM for your department. My my little baby dev instance is getting hammered with all this, but right. So that that app is what you can do, right? I could so I automate the I, I put an advertisement out there, I automate the development and I automate the architecture. So now I come in here and I'd see, you know, just picture an area where I have a catalog and then within the catalog, I can have a specific directory, right? Just for services that are for that finance department. I can say, or uh, what I can do is I could say that finance comes in, they see the finance incident ticket over here. Right, so my idea here is that I'd land them on the category page so they can say, hey, here's the finance category and here's one ticket per incident on there. And I'm really a couple hours away from doing that, from automating all of that so that their specific catalog item is created and only people in the finance department can see that. Everybody can't see it. So when they log into that central portal, they don't have to build the portal. They don't have to build the agent workspace, right? So whether it's the portal or their agents are coming in and working on tickets, uh, they have all of that at their fingertips in one email, right? When they click on the button. So I think that's pretty obvious, right? But that's really the benefit of, of, of a product manager. You're constantly looking, how can I get value quicker? And how can I add more value? So this is our first journey. I'm, I'm gonna say, hey, you can now open an incident because you can go to your incident catalog item. You can now go to the service operations workspace and you could see that ticket. So I wonder, I was gonna to try to zoom in. You can see that ticket in the agent workspace. Uh, you can also assign it, right? You can do any work on it. You can enter a note and then go back. And so you do a little back and forth yourself here to see all the interfaces that you get as part of this package. But it's like five minutes after you click the button, right? It's not two weeks down the road where somebody demonstrates it to you um, in a in kind of a development instance, right? Here you land on your actual organization's page 
and you have your own item again in development, right? But you kind of started that journey already instead of just a bunch of conversations that you have to have and what vendor are we using? And, you know, Hey, I want my own portal, you know, all those other things kind of go away and you say, look, this is how we get you there really quick. Okay. So other things I'm, I'm working on in, in that package is um, I'm really working with a few of my customers right now where I'm doing some of this development. So um, I don't, I'm not a developer, so I will get these stubs and some of these workflows created, uh, but it's a quick way just to demonstrate the value of that, that messy middle for that shared service organization. Right? And that's really what I'm looking at is that shared services. When you just let it happen, kind of hodgepodge, it makes a mess whether you're on service now or, or not. Right, because you're saying that everybody can now come in and use ITSM. Well, you have the same product sprawl problem as you did before, unless you're able to put a wrapper around it and, and create a product of your own, right? You're, you're not just letting everybody pour in and using the service now, um, you know, start from scratch IT service management. All right, I left some time for questions. Does anybody have any questions on, on the concept here? I use IT service management just to hit everybody, right? Because they all knew what that was. But we've done this with customer service management, public sector digital services, where we create these very explicit packages that are are made, you know, for a state or you know some central IT organization for states and cities and counties is where I focus. But I could see this being used in, in the medical area, the finance area. There's a lot of people that share their ITSM once they get it started in that central IT agency, central IT uh, component. Yeah, I just think this has been great, great example. I'm glad to see ServiceNow being used as an example because you don't always do that. And it's nice to have that um, from platform owner view. So yeah, all good. Oh, thanks, Sue. I will put some stuff up on our forum too, because there's some, there's a little bit of things involved here. So I'll, I'll share some of the, the details about, I've used some of the standards from IT for IT. I've gotten a lot from that group and working with everybody on in the open group. Uh, so a lot of this governance that we talk about and the structuring comes in from industry and I'm able to get that from those committees. Uh, there's also some things in here on how we use the different automation pieces. So I will put some of those details as much as I can in the forum when I post the video of this walkthrough with everybody. All right, and thank you for everybody that worked on this with me. I know a lot of my a lot of my customers that I've worked directly on this with, and you may have seen a couple of your examples without the branding on it. But really appreciate all the help on on getting to where I where I have on this so far. Um, last thing, I'll, I'll we'll drop this in GitHub. So in GitHub, I, I did an example like this a while back uh, for public sector services. Uh, so there's a public service template on here and you can go pull this out of GitHub. Uh, this does a lot of things to, um, to automate the CSDM pieces. Like I talked to you about automating that CSDM model. So this has a little video on how we auto create CSDM with a workflow. Uh, there's some other pieces in here too that say, how do we, like I used an Esri map and I embedded that in a constituent request. Like how do we create that as a standard part of the package? So I've did one of these before. Uh, there was a demonstration a couple of years ago I did on, on the public service template. It was along these lines, but it wasn't as structured with all the personas and the governance and everything. So when I put that on the GitHub, I'll put that in there too. So if you do want to pull the little stub down I did, you'd be able to get that off, off of my GitHub repo. All right, if there's no more questions, I think I have shared everything I want to this week. And uh, we don't have any other speakers this week, but if you do have anything you're working on, I'm always looking hey, for more people to step up. And John, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I wanted to sort of bring this demo you had to as ultimate conclusion. So we've got the dev environment set up, finances, conducting agent training, workflows are understood, work queues are defined, at some point a green light is gonna be pulled. Would it be reasonable to assume that at that green light point, the dev ITSM environment is ported directly over to prod as part of go live? Is that really the end conclusion of this exercise? 
Yeah. And, and not only that, but you're creating a, a group, you're creating, um, you're provisioning an agent works like service operations workspace, and you're creating explicit catalog items only for that department. Right? So besides being able to show it in your a copy of your production environment, you're, you're doing a lot of provisioning behind the scenes too. And that's the idea here is that we automate as much of that provisioning as possible in dev. So ideally we get dev to a point where they can say, yep, I like it. And you click another button and promote it to prod. We're not there yet, <laughs> but that's the idea here, right? Is to get them a minimally viable product instantly and then build on that. So it's kind of the string across the river for ITSM to build the bridge from, right? How, how far do we need to go before that, that bridge is ready to cross and I can, that department can actually start using it. So, Thanks. but it's exactly what you said. You're, you're cloning down prod to dev and then you're putting this, this department in dev right away. You're giving them the, the ITIL permission so that they could see the console. You're provisioning that console, but you're not in, in, you're not in prod yet, right? We're not going right to prod with this. We're going to dev and then you had to go to UAT and then to prod with that configuration changes we make for that one department. Did that answer your question or did I go too yes. far? No, perfect. Thank you, John. You're welcome. Anybody else? All right, well, thank you everybody. Appreciate the, the interaction mm -hmm. and the back and forth. If anybody's interested in this, um, my whole team, so all the architects are kind of looking at this with me and helping me. So if you do have interest in it, you can go through your architecture team and your solution consultant, and we can, um, we can help you get as close as you can, at least to expressing the idea and talking about things like product management. Hey, John, could you click on <clears throat> automated architecture? I just wanted to see that. Ah, it's just a stub right now. Ah, okay. All right, all right. <laughs> but I have one in here um, in our dev in our demo instance, I have one in here that builds the CSDM model. And that's basically what this would do. It would build the CSDM model for you. So if you, um, we have a few minutes, I can show you that if you want to. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind. That'd be cool. So that one here um, in the flows. So that was in my other application that I did, that one I showed you in GitHub. So public, that was in the public sector, digital services. No, it was in the public service template area. Yeah, this public service. So this process new citizen case request. So I didn't want to show everybody this because I know you're not all government, but um, it's similar for any case, right? If this is the, the example of where you're creating a case inside of, and we use this um, at the city of Santa Monica, we created, I think it was 62 services in, um, in one month because we automated the, the base of the services. So we were doing three, one, one services. So things like, you know, leaf blower and, um, you know, report a, uh, pothole and broken street light. So we did a lot of those, um, uh, but here, what we started, so we, here is where we created the catalog, um, you know, the catalog variables. And then in there, there is the CSDM piece in here somewhere as well. Catalog task, ask for approval. Look up remote record. So it's looking up to make sure I don't already have catalog items or services in there. Catalog. It's not in this one. Oh, this is creating, this was going to straight to prod. So what I was saying here, this is more of a promotion to prod. We created the catalog item task. So we used a remote record creation to create it in prod. Um, what I'll do is um, I'll give you a link here instead, because I, instead of fishing for this, if you go to our, um, our playlist and I demonstrate the auto creation of that CSTM model in, in one of these videos, it was back in January. So let me put the link for you. That'll be easier than me kind of fudging around here, trying to remember what I did, but this service service is a service. I called it. And, um, in here, you say it promoted. 
I go through um, I I go through that that chunk of code. Think about the system. So I'm going to look this up in development. Right. So I go I'll go through that chunk of code, and then I'll show you. Um, and there's a PowerPoint too. I'll show you how it actually builds all these parts of the CSDM. So it built the catalog item. It built report streetlight out. Um, or hunting in this case, so legal hunting. And then it said, what do I use? So it kind of built all these models with a workflow. And so the code's there and the uh, video's there to show you how that works. Awesome. Me, you're welcome. I'll just put that link in there and you'll have it all. Great. So here, here it is in the chat. Right. And I'll post the video along with the um, along with what I did today and the links to the GitHub repository. I'll post that by next week so everybody has it. I know it's uh, you know conceptual, so this is the type of thing on the digital service form we like to see is kind of these conceptual things that are still not really tidied up, right? They're still, but if we just get interest in it, we can go ahead and push it further with customers. So a couple of customers we are pushing for forward with this already. I just wanted to show it to everybody in the early stages in case you're doing something like it um, that we can collaborate on it. All right. Thank you. One, one quick question. This is, this is actually hitting home because one of my clients is actually doing this. We're generating a, a ton of flows off of like a, a order guide to build all our CSDM um, foundational um, uh, components. But I think their biggest struggle is what <laughs> is actually eliciting the right amount of information to actually build this. Like, do you have any suggestions with the client? Because they're asking for like hundreds, if not thousands of different questions that they want to ask before they build out services. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of corny, but I mean, I like the MVP approach. Like, what do you really need to just get somebody's hands on it? And that's what I, that's what I focused on here. Right. The worst thing is to say, okay, let's talk about this thing for six months. So whatever it is that they're building, if they can get that that MVP out and then kind of decide, hey, when do we have enough of the development automated to release it to prod? When do we have enough of the architecture automated? When do we have enough of the catalog? Um, so whatever you're building there, uh, there's so much analysis paralysis on this stuff. So that's why I like the fact, you know, just shoot them the email and give them. Yeah, because and then you know what's missing, right? Instead of assuming what's missing. Yeah, and we, I mean, the building the CSDM part of it was actually the simple part <laughs> in my mind, yeah. like automating that and publishing it all the way up to prod. It's yeah. just determining the right amount of information because, I, I mean, it, it may be different based off the organization, but they have a, a really strong need to understand um, what um, the services are are connected to, especially on the technical service side. So there's a, a ton of information that we're eliciting about, um, well, what servers are, are they on, what data center that they need to run on, you know, who owns those servers and stuff like that. And it's, yep. it seems that we got to a point where we're, we're now putting multiple variable, <laughs> variable sets of information on multiple catalog items that ask 10 or 20 question, questions. And at this point in time, we're just asking way too much information. Yeah, the other thing that really helps is chunking it. Right, like this thing is if you make it all land on one person and they're just getting punch drunk with all the questions and how many instances are we using and what features do we need, um, right? But you also have the architect there and, and, and they're building that product. It's a lot easier to get when you have like a team of people that are working on it that cover different areas instead of everything just landing on usually the, the service now product owner, right? Is the one that gets yeah, it, it typically is. And, and we we've we've been pushing back hard um because it, it's I imagine the person coming in and saying, Well, I want a new service and having to fill out, you know, five calo items because they've gone to the point where they need too much information, right? Yeah. Um, I think the, the you. answer is um, you know, I've I've been really drinking the Kool-Aid on product management. And I think some maybe people do projects and they're done and they don't really have the philosophy of this minimal viable product, continual improvement. Um, it's just not in a lot of places yet. 